some notable running backs now on the bye. We talked about Cleveland before, of course, Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt with the Chargers, Austin Eckler and Joshua Kelly. Seattle, the great duo of Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet, and then the Bucks, Rashad White. Yeah, but with a lot of running backs out for this week, we potentially are getting one back. So big news that happened after we did the show yesterday, which is that Jonathan Taylor expected to come off the physically unable to perform list off the um, off of that and practice this week with the team. Shane Steichen said he's gonna he he expects Jonathan Taylor to practice today, and so the assumption is is that Jonathan Taylor will be suited up on Sunday. And so I just Jonathan Taylor at this my, at this point might have the widest range of outcomes of any player in fantasy football. If you're telling me that Jonathan Taylor stays healthy the rest of the year and all's good in the hood in Indianapolis, and all of a sudden he's just going to slide right in and get the 98%, you know, uh, rushing attempts that, uh, that Zach Moss does, this, you know, the, this insane workload, Jonathan Taylor's the number one running back in fantasy. Like, it's him and Christian McCaffrey, like, yeah. right there. If he's going to get that kind of workload on that team. On the other hand... Just because he practices, they could be like, well, Zach Moss has been pretty good. And Jim Irsay called down and said, nah, -uh, not with that guy. Screw that guy or whatever. I mean, like, or, you know, we're trying to trade him. Don't, you know, put him in bubble wrap. I, who knows? Like, I have no idea what's going to happen here with Jonathan Taylor. But, like, he could be completely useless. He could literally be the number one running back in fantasy. Yep, I think you're right. The outcomes are from uh, current day Christian McCaffrey to current day Kareem Hunt. Like literally, he might just be he might just be eight carries a game for a little bit because Zach Moss has been so solid and there's such weirdness around that situation. But I think that say you're one and three uh, in a fantasy league and you need to take a swing to get back into it, then try trade for Jonathan Taylor because you're yeah. not going to get a higher upside play. Yeah, I mean, that, you still hold Zach Moss, right? A hundred percent. I mean, yeah. so again, Zach Moss has 72 touches in three games. He's the ninth best running back in fantasy football so far. To your point, Zach Moss has been good. You know, and you know, and so. Again, it's also one of those things that in terms of Shane, uh, Shane Steichen, new coach, trying to establish himself in the locker room, like, you know, like this stuff matters. And like guys in the locker room are not going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Zach Moss has been balling out for us. And all of a sudden now he's going to the bench like he's done nothing wrong. And again, I'm not saying that like Jonathan, he's replacing Jonathan Taylor because Jonathan Taylor is Jonathan Taylor. But the fact is, is that I don't think Zach Moss suddenly goes to zero touches like he's been too good for him to get, I mean, you lose the locker room that way when, you know, I mean, so I, I don't know. It, this is a wide range, but I agree with you. Like, I do think wide range. So if you need to take a swing, go for it, you know, like, but definitely don't drop Zach Moss, uh, trade for Jonathan Taylor, or yes, if you need to take a big swing one way or the other. The top running back on waiver wires the this week. The other thing, week. by the way, is also if you're, if you are three and one, you're four and oh, like, I don't mind trading for Jonathan Taylor because your team's probably strong enough that you can take the hit. Right, and then you can sort of be like, you know, I'll take the hit, and then like if he comes back and he's anything close to what we think, powerhouse, boom, yeah. then you're just rolling the yeah. rest of your league. The top running back back on waivers this week is Jaleel McLaughlin, um, the undrafted free agent out of Youngstown State that made the Broncos. He's available in 97 percent of leagues. Samaji Piran's available in 48 percent of leagues. They have the Jets this week. The report all we have right now, guys, is Javante Williams with the hip injury, not expected to miss much time. But, Jay, we don't know what exactly that means. What we do know, McLaughlin is slowly getting involved already in this offense as a speed-catching scat back. Yeah, I mean, he certainly looked impressive, and they've given him some work in the red zone as well, which is a little bit surprising. But he was the guy last week. My question to you, though, Connor, is that Julian McLaughlin has a pass block rating on PFF of 5 out of 100. Is that just going to keep him off the field? It depends. You pretty much can't leave him back there to pass protect. So it means if they keep doing that, he has to get the ball coming his way. It is a problem. It's a problem, and that's why guys like this go undrafted. It happens all the time. When they're smaller backs, you don't feel like they can take a heavy workload on early downs, and then on third downs, you don't know if they could block. So they're kind of one-dimensional <laughs> if they don't play special teams. And I love, love McLaughlin's story and think it's very, very real. But, Jay, it's a really good point. As you see his snap rate right there, and this is with Javante going out at 33%. I think he's a guy that'll just never play over 40% of the snaps unless they're losing horrifically and constantly throwing. But that doesn't matter in right. this sense because what, to your point, is it, it it's actually means that, like, when he's out there, he's getting the ball. It's yes. a problem for defensive coordinators to be like, oh, <laughs> like, if he's out there, that you know, chances are, like, and they'll work with him on the, on the, on the, on the pass pro. But, like, after Javante went out, he played 37% of the snaps. Samaji P. Ryan played 57% of the snaps. But then you look at the, the numbers, like, McLaughlin got 10 touches. P. Ryan got eight. And so, and by the way, McLaughlin, much better 
Like I was, Samaj P. Run was one of my guys in the preseason, but I'm I'm willing to wave the white flag here and be like, it's just for whatever reason it doesn't seem to be working out for him in Denver. A lot of stuff isn't working out there. But McLaughlin, uh, to your point, I mean, seven for seventy-two. So we know about the big playability. Like him in the passing game, three for thirty-two and a touchdown against the Bears. But remember, like remember, like I think in week two he got one carry, but it was a five-yard touch for a touchdown. Like they trusted him enough in the red zone to give him that one carry to give him inside the 10 yard line as well. He is the NCAA all time leader in rushing yards, like all divisions, like, so yeah. including like, you know, um, FCS and D2 and uh, you know, everything like that. I mean, but like 8,166 yards undrafted free agent out of Youngstown state to your point. Great story. Yeah. Uh, great story. Tons of speed. He's, he, he's a, um, he's, he's a, He's a spark on a team that needs something. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, we'll, we'll move on. But I think he's I, – I agree with you. Like, he's not going to all of a sudden take over this backfield because of the pass pro issues. And so it'll be – but I, I could see him replacing P. Ryan on – you know, if, if once Javante comes back, and who knows on Javante with his hip, hip flexor. But we don't have a lot of information there. I just – He's a fast, talented running back that Sean Payton found and discovered and keeps using more and more and more. And those are players that I think you want. And they'll, fi- we'll, they'll figure out a way to get them on the field. Our next running back, Chuba Hubbard of the Panthers. They got the Lions this week. They are at Detroit. He's available in 75% of leagues. They go to Detroit, then they go to Miami. They got the bye week. And then Houston, Chuba Hubbard in week four, Jay, 14 carries, 41 yards, two catches for 12 yards. And we know Miles Sanders has been dealing with a groin injury. Yep, indeed. I think that was the reason why Chuba Hubbard saw more snaps, 54% of snaps versus Miles Sanders at 43%. And look, Miles Sanders this year is averaging 2.9 yards per carry. This hasn't happened at all. And Chuba Hubbard, who has been a staple of the Tuesday waiver wire show for 12 months now in various <laughs> yes. uh, iterations, uh, he's kind of the poster boy for this. But look, he gives you something out of the backfield. He's had 12 targets this season. Seems like they really want to throw to the running backs as well because Miles Sanders is getting a ton of targets too. So, I mean, it's not very exciting, but he does have some w- room here to provide value. Their offensive line hasn't been good. Bryce Young has struggled, and he's yeah. been willing to dump off to the running backs, and so maybe they just decide to go more run-heavy with both guys there as well. We mentioned P. Ryan before as well, but just to note here, and you'll see it when we come up with the full screen here, but it's McLaugh- for me it's McLaughlin, Hubbard, and then P. Ryan. P. Ryan will have seen increased role with the Javante Williams injury, but again, he's been under 40 total yards in three or four games this season. So I'm sort of like, P. Ryan qualifies at running back and will get an increased role, but there's not a lot of excitement here. Candidly, it's not a great week for running backs this week. Yeah, and with that, it brings us to Tajay Spears, who we've talked about on the show. He becomes Tom. relevant with the Derrick Henry injury, Barry, but besides the reason he's available in 76% of leagues, I mean, the fact he's playing is nice. Five carries, 40 yards. He's making the most of his touches. Three cat catches for 18 yards in week four. But with Tajay Spears, he's just a part-time player with an offense that has a lead back. He's a stash. Yep. He's a stash until something happens with Derrick Henry, whether he gets hurt it's or like if he gets four. traded. Correct. Yeah. He's he's just he's merely a high upside stash, as is the next guy on our list, Connor Jeff Wilson Jr. Like so, he's he's eligible to return to practice this week. Now we've heard nothing out of Miami yeah, in weird. terms of his injuries, and obviously, given the success of Mostert and specifically Devon Achan, they aren't necessarily rushing to running back. They actually like Savon Ahmed there as well. So it is a bit of a crowded backfield or running back room. But Jeff Wilson Jr., following the trade from San Francisco last year, led the Dolphins in red zone touches and goal-to-go carries. He's somebody that has a history with Mike McDaniel as well. And so given the explosiveness of, of this offense, Jeff Wilson Jr. is another guy that should probably be stashed on your bench if and when he comes back and is eligible to return. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Roto World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.